We're all going to start laughing. Oh my gosh. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, this is Brittany Bingold, Wendy Peterson, and Julia Salsi. Julia, you're on the bottom of my screen now. That's going to oh, I my, am. That's going to mess my up. That's going to mess with my brain from the last time we did this. Okay. So anyways, um, we are Gilbert Public Schools Professional Growth and Development Instructional Specialists. Um, and we are here to do a YouTube Live today um, of a question and answer. So just kind of a, a very conversational live stream. Uh, we wanted to check in on everyone. Um, and, and mainly this could be a little selfish. We just wanted to see each other because <laughs> we haven't seen each other in so long. Um, so that, you know, that was kind of the purpose of getting on and just making sure, you know, how you see how you guys were doing, but also to um, give you guys some tips and tricks in this kind of transitional time in our district. Um, so welcome. And not just our district, there could be other people here. Yes, there could be other people here. So welcome. other districts as well. So everybody, welcome, whoever you are, welcome, welcome. We are so glad you are here. Um, no matter where, which district or which school you're coming from. Um, just really quick, just a, a quick reminder, if you are in our district, okay, in Gilbert Public Schools, there is the Employee Hub, and we have a link on the Employee Hub for professional growth. And if you're a new hire, there's this great page for tips, right, Julia, that has the induction video on it. It has all your induction requirements, okay? Um, there's also our rigor and relevance and relationships page that kind of goes through a lot of our philosophies as a district. And then we have our digital PD on demand page that has a lot of our digital PD classes, including some mini classes that are five to 15 minutes, something quick um, strategy you can take and use right away. And then we've got some of the longer two hour ones that would be um, similar to if you were with us in a physical classroom. Um, and we try to make those as interactive as possible. So those are all in the hub. Um, and also, if you don't have this bookmarked on your bookmark, I'm a little offended. It's fine. Um, but it is uh, our link tree, which is going to scroll for a little bit on the bottom of the screen. But if you have that bookmarked, you will be have access to not only um, the employee hub and the district website, but also all of our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. It'll take you right there in one click. Um, and it will also take you to our podcast website that we have, and it will also um, take you to our course catalog for um, either the fall or the spring. So that would be a really good one to bookmark um, on your bookmarks bar and just um, retitle it PGD. And that way, you know, I have a question for the girls and you can just click it. And there's all the, all the links to all the things you would ever need for our department are in that one place. Um, and then, of course, and anytime, if you think of something, put it in the chat. Um, we would love to have solicit questions from the um, comments. So go ahead and put it in the comments and we'll kind of solicit some questions that way. Um, but also feel free if later on this week something pops into your head in the shower and you're like, oh, my gosh, they said this thing and I have this question. Feel free to email us. You know, um, at, it's all we all have our GPS emails, which it basically is our names. Um, at gilbertschools.net, except for mine is weird because I go by Brit. So it's Brittany, T T A N Y, uh, dot bingled at gilbertschools.net. Wendy's is wendy.peterson. And then Julia down below now. This is weird. Now I have to figure out my like directional stuff pointing. Uh, Julia's is julia.celc at gilbertschools.net. So we'll have that scrolling for a little bit on the bottom so you can link up with our social media if you want and get that link tree. Um, bookmarked um, so that you have access to all that is PGD. Uh, so our first top topic is basically, how are you doing? So Wendy, how are you doing? Yeah, I mean, it depends on the moment, right? <laughs> I could feel like awesome right now. And you ask me two minutes later and I'm crying or I'm frustrated and irritated. That's really what I noticed the most is that my emotions are all over the place. I'm always a crier. Um, always have been. Um, my mother has a picture of me at six months old bawling. That is who I am. So I cry if I'm sad, but if I'm angry, if I'm frustrated, if I'm irritated, everything. So I know that I cry more lately. Um, and I know that just all my emotions are a little bit more on the surface, mm -hmm. but I'm doing okay. Um, I don't have young children at home or children in school at home. So I think that makes a big difference for me. I'm able to 
be a little bit more selfish and just focus on myself. Uh, I think because I'm old. Um, Julie and Britt will tell you in a moment they have young children, so they won't get to have real sleep for another like 15 years or something. Um, but I'm okay. Um, the more I um, remind myself that it's okay to not really be okay, the better I am, the more I um, am at, at some sort of peace. So uh, what I am is thrilled that our guests are here today. I can't see you if you're here. So if you're from uh, one of the districts that's not Gilbert and you're here because you saw my crazy uh, post on my page, uh, say hello in the chat so that I know that you're here. Um, Emily, Mark, I know you are going to come on. Um, so let me know if you're here and you're not from Gilbert Public Schools. Welcome to you, but welcome to everybody, uh, including um, my homies from GPS. How are you doing? How are you? Okay, how are you doing? So I am, uh, well, I am typical, I am my typical all over the place self. <laughs> I think that's the, <laughs> that is the character that everything that I have as kind of my little idiosyncrasies, which these ladies can attest to my ability to stay focused. I really, I struggle there a lot. Um, has been exacerbated in this, in this situation. Uh, so I feel like I'm not, I'm not a huge crier. Um, though I have shed some tears in the last couple of weeks, but um, but more so, I just feel like I am a butterfly, just flapping from thing to thing, um, possibly without purpose sometimes. So, um, you know, great example of that is just on Friday, I, I you know, I, I went to do some, was doing some research for an upcoming class, and I, I started to research, then I printed the article, and I walked across my house to the printer, but on the way, I was thinking about my daughter's school, and oh, I need to remember to email the teacher about this, I need to do this, and I ended up in my kitchen, and I'm standing there going, why, why am I in the kitchen? What did I come, what was I here for again? And I'm like, oh, the research, so I went to the printer, right, and as I'm coming back from the printer, I started thinking about, oh, but I need to remember this and this, we have this appointment and this appointment, oh, and we're going to do our YouTube Live, we're going to do this, and, and then I get back into my office, and I'm standing there, and I'm like, look, I look at my research, I'm like, What's this for? <laughs> and that is honestly how I feel. Um, I'm very discombobulated, and I feel like any of my um, po my positive word. character traits right now are amplified. My mm -hmm. negative character traits right now are amplified, and so um, I just feel like everything's highlighted that way uh, right now. Which I think that's just the that's where I think that's where a lot of people are. That is the nature of our current situation. That we are um, just a little bit discombobulated. Um, some of us are working at home for the first time ever, um, teaching our kids for the first time ever. Like you would think the people who would have the easiest time with their kids at home doing home learning would be teachers. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it is so easy to teach other people's kids. But I don't know. It's a little bit more difficult to teach your own. So, uh, so I think that's where, that's where I'm at. I'm doing fine. Um, I just feel a little like constantly frantic, which I'm always a little frantic, but even more so right now. So if you're there, I'm with you. I get you. If you've walked to your kitchen today or you've walked down the hall um, at, at school out of your classroom and you're like, what was I doing again? I get you. Yeah, I, I feel both of those things. I, <laughs> um, not a frequent crier, but I have been a part of the frequent criers club the last, I think, two weeks it's hit me. Um, at first, I was crying a lot because I felt a lot of PTSD from when I was sick and not allowed to go out for four months. Um, so that kind of came into my mind, and that was hard. Um, when That was back in the spring. Um, and then summer hit, and I felt like, okay, this is summer. Here we are. Like, there was no definitive, like... <laughs> end so i was like okay now we're in summer um i don't know i think i'm okay but the heat's getting to me because i can't go on walks and i can't mm -hmm. do some of the things i normally would do with my kids outside so i feel a little bit um claustrophobic and a little bit alone um i think because i'm with two littles all day every day and not a lot of adult interaction i feel um a little isolated from adults i feel and that a lot, you know, and I feel I just think a lot of people feel that I think you're really hitting the nail yeah. on the head. I think they feel isolated. Yeah. And I just I think that's what comes with the tears is I just miss 
um, obviously a routine, but I, and I, and I love my children, but also they're putting me over the edge slightly. So, um, my daughter actually isn't, she's doing fabulous. She's in second grade and she's doing her virtual learning and her teacher is amazing. And I am so blessed to have that teacher in our lives, but actually all teachers, you all are doing amazing. Um, shout out to everybody that is, that is working hard right now, but it's the four-year-old boy who will not be quiet while her, his sister's doing the work that I think is putting me, um, over the edge. So I, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I just think that's where I'm at. I'm a little, I guess discombobulated was the right word. And, um, and just a little isolated, a little alone. I, I haven't really, I'm not really allowed to go out much. So when I do go out, I, I have to be really careful. And, and so I just, it's, it's lonely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'm a little tiring. I'm just a little exhausted. I feel like maybe because yeah. of the heat. Well, and I think when work and home blend together, it's very difficult to, um, to find that balance. I think one of the questions we had um, via email before this was just finding, how do I find that work-life balance? I feel like I feel, you know, teacher was saying, I feel the need to um, address parents' concerns or their, or their tech issues as they come up into the evening, um, which is really when parents are able to work on it. But then, you know, she said, then I don't feel like I'm ever separating work from home. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think that's definitely one of those challenges right now is how do you find that balance? In general, teachers, those of us in education, and honestly, I think a lot of people anymore in a lot of um, career fields are really struggling for that work-life balance just because technology has made it so easy for work to follow you home. Um, so, but in, in this particular situation, for sure, I think everybody's feeling that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Also, we talked about like finding your people too. I mean, anytime I get a web, get a little, get off a WebEx with these ladies, I feel better. For like, I feel like my cup has been refilled as Julia drinks out of her coffee cup. I feel like my cup has been refilled a little bit. And I feel like you got to find your people. You got to find the people that will build you up and have your back, but also tell you straight, like, wow, that was really not great. Or like, I can't, like the other day I sent this to like Wendy and I was like, just listen to this because I just... I can't listen to it anymore or edit it anymore. Can you just listen to it and just see if it sounds good? And she's, and we were, it was a podcast that I was working on and she, I was editing it. She was like, it's fine. Be done with it. Put it away. And what, you know what I mean? And it's hard sometimes for us to, I mean, I can work on something. I'm a perfectionist, you know, and I'm, I'm a recovering perfectionist. I'm trying to be just more like me. Yeah, I really am just trying to be more like, it's progress. It's done. Move on. But it's hard for me, I think. And I think it's hard for a lot of educators because we want to be those perfectionists. And we just got to remember that progress is perfection at this point, because you know what? You've got to just make that progress. Um, so I think having your people is really important. And, well, and, and, and don't yeah. you think too, Britt, it can be, you know, for the teachers who are with us right now, um, it can be formal people like your PLC or your data team, right. your grade level team, whatever whatever it's called, wherever you are. Um, and then it's also those people uh, on your campus or kind of in your circle. I mean, it could be a custodian. It could be uh, one of the school secretaries. It, it could be well, somebody in the cafeteria, but people who fill you up. So Britta said she feels better after she gets off um, a WebEx with us and um that that to me is how you want to feel you want as you said your cup filled i use emotional bank account like um if you have filled up my emotional bank account then i can handle some um some withdrawals from that account um but it's so important to find people who will affirm you um, but also provide you with assistance when when you need it, mm -hmm. and um, and that can make all the difference in the world. And I, I see in the comments, what's wrong? Is to hold on, my dog needs to go to the. Okay, okay, take Kubo out. Julia and I, Julia, Julia and I will keep talking. Um, so Sarah, bless you, saying thank you, Wendy, for being one of my people. I can't comment, or I would have commented back. Yeah. Um, but I so 
appreciate that because I try to be there for others. And I really think that that needs to be all of our goals. Like, who do I need to be there for? How can I help fill the cup for the emotional bank account of the teacher who's next door to me or the colleagues on my um, data team? And, and what is it that we need to do to help them um, feel a little bit more okay in this in this maybe not okay time? Well, I think I will go back, um, you know, into, I don't know what normal is, but as we start to transition back into um, face-to-face learning or being back in the office together, I know that I will come to the table now with a greater appreciation for all of the informal conversations that I have. Um, you know, I get more, I think now I realize I get more sometimes from those conversations than I do from the formal ones. Okay. Um, so, you know, I think that uh, that, that is something that, that, that will be a benefit, just that appreciation we're all going to come to the table with um, for, for those connections that we have, whether, like Wendy said, whether it's support staff or it's custodial, you know, whatever, a teacher down the hall, teacher in your PLC, we're really going to appreciate and value, I think, those, those human connections even more. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, and that it's okay to laugh and to smile and to dance and to be silly, even though that these are not these are really serious times, you know, but um, you guys are making educational history right now. I mean, you will be in history books, you know, and it is amazing what you have accomplished. And so I just, I want to fill your cup right now. If your cup is filling empty, you know, you have done amazing things. Um, Julia had a really great suggestion. Julia, what, what was your suggestion they should do on their piece of paper if they have something in front of them or scratch paper? Yeah, so I think you should think about um, all the things, and we'll talk a little bit more about this when we talk about like what you're gonna do in your classroom, but really think about all those things that you have learned um, in the last few months and list them out. I think to begin placing value that this hasn't been time lost, this hasn't been, um, you know, there isn't anybody who wouldn't agree that this has been incredibly difficult and devastating um, at times, but there are components of this that we have positive things that we will carry forward with us as we return to the classrooms. And so I think just listing those things out, all the skills you've learned. Um, I know Wendy's gonna be like, what's gonna be on the top of your list, Wendy? Oh. Um, probably screencastify. There we like go. When I, I first heard that word in March or something, I was like, oh, heck no. No, 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 no. And now I'm like, bring on screencastify. Um, so that, oh, and the other thing, okay, don't laugh at me, but I'm so excited that I understand how to link things to pictures and words. Um, I know most of you have been doing that for like 20 years or something, but I just learned and I'm so excited. So, yeah. Okay, go on. I have lots that I could put on my no, paper. So I, so I think the idea here is that, you know, if we list those things out and we carry those forward with us, um, I saw on a, uh, a post from someone on um, Instagram, Forget Your Teach On, um, one of the groups that we follow, um, they, one of the teachers said, you know what, teachers will come back and realize that they have had more professional development or and acquired more skills and gained more things that will be beneficial to their kids in the classroom than they ever could have in any other way. And by all means, would it be a method that any of us would ever want to do again? No. Mm -hmm. um, but I think now, as we kind of continue to move forward and transition back, um, it's really now about figuring out those things that that have that we've gained and using them to make the best classrooms possible. Well, and so I don't think that we want to like throw the baby out with the bathwater. I'm really not an extremist. So even though tech is difficult for me, if I were going back into a classroom, well, and I am going back into the classroom, I, I teach teachers. Um, <laughs> I have things that I want to now include or do differently based on what's happened in the last six months. So for me, teachers need to do a really nice blend of, um, of technology and digital learning and, and the in-person learning. I think that those can be melded to make our classrooms and, and student learning even better 
And again, I'm saying that as a technophobe and a really, really old lady. So well, I think what you're referring to is what this sounds really scary to you every time I bring it up, Wendy. It but does. Hold I on. Think, I think what you're referring to is what um, the Modern Teacher website, which is the website that really gave us the idea for the playlist concept that we've rolled out. Um, they offered a professional development on building a digital ecosystem. And that sounds scary, right? Um, Very. Basically, it's about building an environment where the digital world is present and used and interacted with regularly. And of course, we know Gilbert is, has some requirements as to how we're going to continue to use our digital tools. Um, but it's interacted with regularly, whether you're at home or in, in the classroom, that there are certain things that are the same no matter where you're at. Um, and so it's, a, it's really about building that bridge so that if a student does have to leave your classroom because there has been some type of exposure um, and they're gone for two weeks, you know, it's not going to be difficult for them because you're still maintaining that digital ecosystem and they're, they're able to fluidly move back and forth if we, you know, heaven forbid, have to go back into a situation where we are doing all remote learning again that digital ecosystem is there. And so it's a seamless transition. And I think that's the challenge for teachers right now is how do I now transition students without it being traumatic or sudden or abrupt? Um, because these kiddos have been home for six months. Right. You know, you add summer into the mix, you add the time lost last spring and, and the few weeks we've had now, they've been, they've been home um, and away from school for half a year at this point. Um, transitioning back into school is is going to be a challenge. And, you know, on top of that, we're putting these social distancing guidelines in place. Um, I know earlier I, we I made the analogy of, you know, when we bring these students back, they've been they've been home, they've been kept away from their friends um, and they're, you know, they're missing them. I liken that to someone who really loves sweets and you've not let them have candy for six months. Or, or donuts or whatever, and then all of a sudden you send them to the bakery, but then you say, ah, don't get too close to the baked goods, right? Um, and I think it's the same for our kids, right? Where they've been away from their friends for so long, but then we're sent, we're gonna send them back to school and we have to teach them the, these social distancing guidelines that don't come naturally to them. Their natural instinct is gonna be to run to their friends and jump up and down and high five. And so I think now when we talk about this transition and we talk about what our kids need, we need to really consider it from that perspective, from, from that lens as well. Yeah. Sorry, I had to jot out and take my dog and, and put him away because um, he was barking. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I think when if I were a teacher and I had been staring at a screen with my blue light glasses on for six months, I would want to run into my classroom and just be like, like do like a julie andrews on top of the mountain circle from sound of music and just be like i'm really excited to um you know be done with online learning oh sarah just said it i would you know i would really be hard you know to be i would just want to throw out everything right um but you can't because it will really throw off i think the the kids and i think it'll throw off you you've got to keep that balance for both your sanity of um, bound of all the stuff that you're doing and the kids sanity as well. Okay. Right. But I love the bakery analogy. She, Sarah just, said, I love the bakery analogy. It's like all the kids are like, it's like basically taking them to the edge of the beach and be like, yeah, but you can't play. Mm -mm. Right. Right. You know, they're all to it, but you can't right. play. It. You know, that's how I felt the last few months, six months with my kids at the park. There's the park by park, you know, like, and they just, my, my son's like, Oh, the park is sick. I mean, it's like, what, how do you explain right. that to a four year old? So, right. Yeah, we're talking about transitioning in back into, you know, don't return to that regularly scheduled programming. You have learned so much, yes, um, so much that you can bring that is so positive back into into your classroom. Um, so I don't don't feel like you you're you know you haven't learned anything. I mean, I think I, I've learned a ton, you know, and I, I thought I knew a lot, and I've already learned a lot of different tools as well, um, or I've gone deeper you know, until like what I've, I've like mm -hmm. really understand what this tool could, could possibly do um, for students and, and for teachers too. And so but, if I'm um, hearing this all correctly, it's really about finding a good, making a good mashup. Yeah. Right? I think if you were to list out, like, what is it that you just really wish you had, what you feel like you've lost with face-to-face -face mm -hmm. and those things that are just pulling on your heart, 
those are the things you want to make sure continue to have that, that you build in and face to face. And then what are those things that have made your life more efficient, easier? Um, you've gotten deeper responses from kids as a result of it. Those are those things you're going to keep and you're going to mash those things together. Okay. So, okay. A great question, right? It came up in a lot of the direct messages that we've got from teachers. Ha okay, girls. So <laughs> every PD I go to that you guys do, we're in groups of four, which I know is the ideal number. Okay. You've had us have them make teams. <laughs> How do I do this? with cooperative learning structures in a social distance environment. And I think Julia was rolling right into that perfectly. So I, yeah. you know, just, well, I didn't and I, that question up there because I thought that was a yeah. good one. <laughs> I think, um, I think before we can talk about how to do that cooperative learning well, we should talk about how we make space in the classroom so that kids are, the, any things that we can do to get the kids separated, because then we can talk about once they're separated out and you have the space for them to stand Mm -hmm. and connect in different ways um how we do that cooperative how we can bring that cooperative learning in so yeah, i think right, this is your area for sure the classroom design yeah, the last, I mean, before these two get going the last thing we want to do i know sorry uh, the, we won't take our drinks we're like yep this is uh, our the last thing we want to do is throw out what research tells us is excellent and that we can see anecdotally as teachers is excellent. And that's that cooperative learning, uh, that collaborative learning. Mm -hmm. And and so before I talked to Julia and Britt, I, I was totally freaking out. How, how do teachers accommodate this? How do teachers still include mm -hmm. cooperation in their classrooms? These two have the answer. These two, the, these two have the answer. It's not worth it. You don't know. It's, but, yeah. I know. This makes me look dumb. <laughs> but um, don't, some teachers will be happy that their kids are back in straight rows, that they don't have to have any kids working together, that it can just be silent in the classroom. And to that, I say, no, don't go back there. And I turn it over to Julian Britt, who are just brilliant with this part. Um, well, thanks for that, Wendy. Um, I think, <laughs> well, okay. I don't know if anybody watched Marie Kondo's tidying up on Netflix, but like that show just spoke to my inner, my inner soul. Um, because I am the, the neat person. I am the tidy person. Um, you know, I am the one that gets the mail and stands over the recycle bin as I go through it. And if it is not something I need, it goes in the recycle bin and it's over. Okay. So I am a purger by nature. My husband has had to train me to like keep birthday cards. He's like, one day you're going to want to read those. I'm like, okay. So like I have now a birthday card box that I put them in, but like before I would not keep any of that stuff. Cause I'm crazy like that. Um, so I think here's what we have to think about. Okay. Cooperative learning. Yes. Should they still be in teams ladies? Yes. Should we still have cards or something on the desks that can make sure they have individual jobs and accountability? Yes. Okay. Yes even if they're in rows, okay, and they're six feet apart or five or however you, much you can get them in there, they can still do something in a team, okay, and they know who their team is, right, because they have four of spades, four of clubs, four of diamonds, and four behind these four of, uh, four of hearts, and I know who's who and who's in charge of doing what of what part of what activity, okay, and that doesn't mean they're touching papers. That can be digitally, okay, that could be on a whiteboard, Okay, which we can get talk about later. But in order to get that space, okay, and this is part of that art and design class that I have, the art and design of classroom. I don't know what it's called. Um, something it's something with <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to think of it myself. I need more coffee. It's the class of something with art and design, but basically if you haven't used it in one or two years, you have to get rid of it. And I'm just gonna say it and I'm just gonna and I don't I'm sure I'm gonna get hate mail. Make but, sure people are sitting down first so yeah, that they don't think. Sit down for a lot of the things I'm about to say, okay? If you haven't used it in one to two years, if it is a binder you have created, okay, not district materials that have been given to you by the district, but if it's a binder you've created and you've not opened it and you can go 
and dust flies off of it. Don't look at it. Julia made the great point last session. Don't even open it. Right, Julia? Mm -hmm. Because yeah, so it, what's going to happen? I am, yeah, I, am, I have a hard time. I can handle piles to a certain extent, but then I can't. Um, and so, but I know myself and I can go down the, the black hole, the little rabbit hole of if I'm like purging things. And if there's ever been a time to purge guys, now is the time. Now is the time. Moment. Um, because you are coming back with a bunch of different skills. We do need more actual physical space in the classroom. So if you haven't touched it, here's my rule of thumb for myself. I would say, Julia, have you opened this in the last year or two? And if my answer is no and it doesn't belong to the district, I just slide it into the trash can. Recycle. Because if I open it, I'm like, oh, I remember that. Oh yeah, that, right? And I'm like, well, I can't get rid of this now. And I close it up and I push it back and it becomes the base of a new pile, right? So so the my, my rule of thumb for myself is if I haven't used it in one to two years, don't open it, just toss it. Um, if it belongs to the district and I haven't used it in one to two years, ask someone on your campus what you're supposed to do with those materials. Um, but you really do have to, now is the time to purge. Now is the time to purge. And we're talking purge. I'm talking look around your floor. Okay. We need open floor space. So if there are things around the perimeter of your classroom, you need to look at that piece of furniture or that, you know, obviously things that you can't move, you can't move. But if it's something you have put in there, like a bookcase or an extra couple of desks for copies or whatever, look around and be like, what can I get rid of so that I can separate kids out and that it looks clean and it is easy to clean. Okay. It's easy to keep sanitary. Okay. So if you purge things out of cabinets, things that maybe used to be in the shelves that you had out for student use, since they can't share materials right now, maybe those things can go back in the cabinets for a little while, right? So you're not losing all of it. You're not throwing it all away, right? But you just need to like reshift and edit down things that you haven't really used or needed. That also is about wall space too. And I know Wendy, you wanted to jump in, so go ahead. No, no, jump in. Okay, you wall going. space is really important too. Um, a lot of wall space in teachers' classrooms that we have walked in through or seen is dedicated to teacher stuff, okay? I had the same thing. I had my desk with my teacher corner. I had all my, my pictures of my family and <clears throat> my degrees and all that kind of stuff. But it's a huge corner that really I could have gotten rid of a little bit and thought maybe outside of the box a little bit, use one of those old AV carts that have like the like the overhead projectors used to sit on and have like those. I know those. Things. I know. I know those too. Okay. Me too. I only use them for one year, but to be fair. Um, but you have those, maybe you put your laptop and your dot cam on the top, and maybe, you know, all of your maybe things you need to grade, maybe put some baskets down there, and then you have your pens and all your other stuff, your clicker, whatever you need. And you're a rotating teacher in your own room, you know? I mean, we've got rotating teachers that go from class to class. Maybe you're your own rotating teacher because you need that corner to space them out. Research says that 20 to 50% of your wall space should be clear. And we don't mean not decorated, okay? We want it to look good, but we want it to be based in student work, room for student artifacts. Okay, um, and so you want it to be clear and clean and those anchor charts maybe rotated out instead of all up maybe, and I know some of them you have to have all up depending on what you're teaching, but some you could rotate out um, and, and try to get it as edited down and purged as possible so that the students kind of have a mental like, this is different, right? I'm in a mask, I'm separated out, and then you still got to bring the warmth, right? And you do that by celebrating their work. And it's our learning space once they start creating stuff. Okay, Julia, I know you want to say something. I can see it in your yeah, eyes. I know, right? Like waiting. Uh, no, I, I always tell teachers when I, um, that, that anytime I walk into their room or a parent or, a parent or an adult, their administrator, anybody who's not in there every minute of every day with you, that you that I should be able to walk in and your walls should tell a story of the learning that's been occurring in your classroom. 
And so if, if they do that, it becomes abundantly clear, like what you value, what you're focused on, um, all of those things. Well, and so one of the things that I wanted to add, um, the audience may have already inferred that I am not the neat one of the three, um, much to my mother's chagrin. Um, in fact, I come in some days, well, not since we've been all home. Um, my desk is like cleaned up. It's like the cleaning up fairy came in the middle of the night and cleaned up my desk a bit. Um, and then I take that as a hint. It's not me, I promise. It is, it is you. It's certainly uh, me, I do it to my husband, drives him nuts. So I know. So, so here's something I want to say to those of you who tend to have more piles or tend to have more stuff. Um, grab a friend. So I went uh, into a teacher's classroom to uh, help her declutter. I know that's humorous, but um, sometimes somebody who's uh, filled with clutter can help somebody else better. Um, she could not see the clutter in her room. And it was, it was very, very bad. Like there were piles on the floor. Every table had piles. I, I, I don't even know how many bookcases and file cabinets were in there because she had everything in there from, you know, 20 years of teaching. And it, it probably took up, no exaggeration, half the space of the room. Right. And when I visited with her about it and I tried to be as kind and compassionate as I could be because I get it, um, the thought of partying with all of these things caused yeah. her... Um, a lot, a lot of anxiety. And so if you feel like that, grab a friend to come in. We also don't always see our junk. Like if I have a pile here, pretty soon I don't even notice that there's a pile there. I'm so used to it. But somebody else might come in and go, you really need that pile of stuff there? Because we could do something else with it. So keep that in mind and keep in mind that um that that students need to feel that this space is theirs both y'all have have said that uh, that this space is theirs uh not just yours they are not entering your space um you are sharing a, a space in the same way that you share a home with your family mm -hmm. yep i think um and also you know um our boss is here. Hi, Vic. Um, she says use hallways or outdoor space if you can when it cools down. Um, we, Julia and I advocate a lot for, and Wendy is, does as well, that vertical learning, you know, and uh, that concept of students, maybe as the teacher, you go out in the hall if it's okay with the principal and the building manager and all the things, ask, you know, all the questions, but you could put butcher paper up around the hallway so they're spaced out and they've got their masks and they're discussing something and like one kid is up at the you know bo the bo the butcher paper doing a problem and all the other kids are discussing it okay you know you can use space and still get them distanced out uh, not just only in your classroom but you could also look around your classroom and be like could i even do vertical learning in here or is everything taken up by like cute stuff because we can get super distracted like i love to decorate we all know this i get super distracted by cute stuff and i'm like let's put it up let's put it up you have to have room for student work if you don't have room in your classroom for like five sections of areas where they could do like a stand-up vertical learning where they're spaced out and talking louder through their mouths about a problem or maybe they're coming up with a paragraph or something um just to make sure that they're up they're still socially distanced, they're still masked, but now they're in that cooperative learning environment, right? But they can't do that if there's clutter everywhere mm -hmm. and clutter and things are on the floor and stuff all over the walls that you're like, I can't put that there because I'll ruin this poster. You know, that's, you gotta, you gotta think about those things. I mean, this is the time to think about that space. Um, and you need every inch of space right now. You, do. you need yeah. every inch of space and you want kids to know that you have put that effort in to make sure that they are in a warm, loving environment, but that has been tailored to this situation and this crisis so that they feel safe in there. 
they yeah. feel they feel like okay i can i'm i'm this is a great learning space um right. for me well and i think so you know when we start to and we come back around to that that bakery analogy right mm -hmm. we cleaned up the classroom as much as we can um we've made as much space as possible purged as much as possible the kids are there they've got their masks on we're trying to teach them how to be socially distanced how do we teach them cooperative learning like what or what cooperative learning do we do because like wendy said earlier i think Britt said earlier our our classes are built around this concept right. uh, what we need to understand is it hasn't gone away it's just going to look different than it has in the past yeah. so before we used to use proximity to indicate cooperative learning but i think all of us could say that we've seen kids in proximity sitting in groups and it hasn't been what we would call cooperative learning right. you can still do cooperative learning if they're six feet apart or however many feet apart you're able to get them you just have to do different rules and procedures put different structures in place to help them do that so for example a think pair share that's one of those cooperative learning techniques kind of the we all know yeah we all know yeah, it, we all know yeah. it. Mm -hmm. you that hasn't gone away the kids can still talk to each other from a distance or for your kids that are um, writers Okay, so I'm not talking for your, K, your K-1-2 kids, but from about third grade on up, they can be writing on dry erase boards to each other. And, and I'll be honest, when I think about it, that could possibly be better because you eliminate those impulse responses and you actually allow think time as they're communicating back and forth. And so, um, so I think that's also teaching kids to listen to others. Because a lot of times, and I'm actually still bad at this as an adult, I will have an impulsive comment or something I want to say, and I'm so worried I'm going to lose that comment that I can't pay attention to what people are telling me where they're finishing. I'm waiting for my, my spot to jump in. Um, kids do that. They need to be trained to, to wait. Well, if they're waiting for their partner to write their response back, they have to wait. They have to wait before it's their turn to write again. So, you know, I think we, we should be really careful um, seeing that proximity and cooperative learning go hand in hand because they don't. Proximity does not dictate cooperative learning. Um, if you've been to any of our classes, you'll know that we love our little buckets in the middle of the table that have the, um, the dice, the, the dry erase markers, the post-its, uh, all of those things. And some of you might be thinking, well, I can't do that anymore because they, they shouldn't have shared materials. Yes, they can. Get some sandwich bags and pull out an individual little kit for each kid. So if you're doing it in an activity that involves dice, each kid has their own die. That's part of your purge, right? <laughs> That's part of your purge to separate out those buckets. Separate out that stuff. <laughs> you know, yep. Bags that have been shoved into a cabinet that was donated however long ago. Um, but so when we talk about cooperative learning, it's about students learning together and supporting each other in the learning process that does not require them to be side by side. And students have been doing, as so we talk about um, secondary students, you've been using, perfect, um, just as Sarah says, you've been using tools like Nearpod, Jamboard, and Google Slides for the last however long that they've been in remote learning. Just because they're physically back together in a classroom, but they can't be side by side, doesn't mean, oh, back to row teaching. No, bring that technology with you. They're one to one, keep going. Yeah. You actually just get to be that live facilitator who can, you know, oversee what's happening in a physical space, but they can continue to collaborate and should continue to collaborate in a digital environment as well. And even the little ones can um, do mirror words still. I mean, well, everyone, but we're talking like you can still have mirror words and then turn and then teach, right? Like what they just did and do a little bit of whole brain teaching. You could have hand signals up for different things if you set that up in your classroom, certain, you know, things can use or in rules or they could be questions or they could be like an agree or disagree. You could have a red card and a green card. All of those things that we usually have, we can still use those to cooperate. Mm -hmm. You know, and I like what Sarah said, you know, Google Slides is perfect example of this. Julia and I were just talking about this. You could put a four square up. You know how we always have you guys fold that paper, um, butcher paper into four squares and then everybody has their own square. You could do a four square template on a Google Slide and assign mm -hmm your, um, you know, uh, table one, which is in rows, you know, <laughs> ace of hearts, ace of diamonds, ace of spades, and then the heart gets one section of this digital square. 
and they share, you know, they share that Google slide with their group, right? That's in a row and they still are contributing into this slide. If you've got that one on one tech, you can still do all of those things, even though they're a little bit separated. And that's also going to make them feel like I'm contributing to a group. I'm contributing to my team. I'm still in my I'm still in school. I'm still doing all those things I used to do. I just now have my I feel like I'm back when I had, you know, my own little like desk that had like a cubby, you know, for the older kids where they had all their stuff in it, you know, um, mm -hmm. that's not used that they're not used to that when they get older, you know, they're used, they're used to their shared materials. But I mean, even the younger kids, you know, get them their own little box and put their stuff in it and they should be, you know, good to go. Um, yeah. They can still well, turn and talk. They just right. have to be louder. Right. Taking list, just and apparently I love lists, um, but take and list all of your favorite interactive engaging strategies that you do with kiddos. Mm -hmm. And then just figure out what it looks like now. Don't say, oh, I can't do that anymore. Yes, right. we can. Mm -hmm. We have enough tools, technology, materials, crazy right. intelligence. Right. 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 Yes, that we can, we can talk it out with a colleague if we're hitting a wall, but there is a social distanced version of every strategy out there. I, I really, I know I haven't done it, I haven't done them all. I know. Look exactly the same. Yeah. That's okay. But the Just premise. The and the, the same thing. Yes, the premise and the research behind those strategies still exist, and they'll still be effective if we're true to the point of the strategy. Um, and so, I, I really wholeheartedly believe that everything out there would have its partner. Um, if you have enough people to kind of talk it through and, and play it off of, which goes back to what we're talking about in the beginning, the value of those quick, informal. Um, personal conversations back and forth with the people you pass in the hall. Yeah. Cause I would say, how, I, how am I going to do this four square? I usually do this activity. And then Julia might say, Oh, I used it on Google slides when I was teaching remotely. I, I can send it to you and you can make a copy of the template. I mean, those are the types of things you can do. And then, yeah, you can still get kids up and moving. They just have to be separated. But like Julia said, we have to train them. Okay, mm -hmm. I think my daughter's first reaction is gonna want she's gonna want to hug everyone. I'm gonna be like, no, um, you know what I mean? She, 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 we gotta train those kids. I mean, and I have a preschooler going to preschool, and I'm not gonna be shocked if he comes home with his friend's mask. I'm I, I, like, they thought they were cool and they traded. I'm not even gonna be shocked. Like, things are gonna happen that we just can't anticipate <laughs> as parents, as teachers. Um, but there are things that you can anticipate. Um, happening and you can talk about that stuff in your data teams as well of how you know their tools we have all of these tools now what is our skill that we're trying to teach right and what best can that, what we can we fit that in this environment that we're in but you cannot do that unless you make some space for it mm -hmm. okay I think full circle we need to make space we need to purge I think that's gonna freak people out but I just, oh, Sarah has a four, I know. Sarah, I have one too. Sarah's like, I have a four square template on Google Slides if anyone wants it. So hit up Sarah. And, and <laughs> but I have Sarah, one Sarah is always so willing to share and she's yeah. still here right now. And Suzanne Lunt, who had to go to another meeting, always so willing to share. And and I know that you weren't quite done with that, but I just have to say. I don't even remember what I was saying. I did it. Oh, yeah, where it's because Julia's, um, rubbing off on us so right um rely on each other don't invent the wheel if sarah offers to share something oh yes sarah i would like that and maybe sarah wants something of yours we have to rely on each other first of all we should have been doing that all along if you weren't start now all right so i think we're at our final thoughts right ladies i mean let's just kind of wrap this up full circle um, I would say, obviously, from my perspective, if I was not immunosuppressed and you needed help reorganizing your classroom, do you understand how happy that would make me? For any of you out there who I have come and reorganized your room, do you, you've you seen the joy. It's actually a little bit ill. It's like sickening. Um, I've been there. Wendy's been there with me and she's like, you're literally moving all of this teacher stuff into the hallway. And I'm like, I know. And like, I've had teachers cry and hug me and, and know that the process is needed but it's an emotional process so you might need a buddy or 
a friend or somebody to come help you purge. Um, some of you might have like nothing in your room and you're like, this is easy. But if you're somebody that's been in there, it's like being in your house, you just kind of collect stuff over time. Um, you know, my final thought is make learning space for your kids. Make it about your kids. I mean, I know it's your classroom and you feel like it's your classroom. I'm not saying you can't have a little like a motivational thing somewhere. Not the not the hang in their cat poster. I hate no. that poster. Um, but and I'm sorry if you have that poster, but I, I really don't like it. Oh, no, you're not sorry. We're but, not you know, sorry. But if it's or if it's anchor charts or stuff, you know you're gonna reference all the time. Of course, have that stuff up, right? But if it's things that you're like, uh, if I took that down and I took this space away and I put it away in these cabinets or I put this in this area or just for now, even if I stored it in my garage for a little while until we get you know through this time, just to make more space and learning space for your kids, I think that would be a really big bang for their, your buck um, as far as this transition. I'll, uh, I'll jump in with final thoughts next. She's laughing. I'm laughing because of Vicky's comment that she used oh, to I have that poster. What? Vicky used to have the cat poster, our boss. <laughs> so did almost every secondary teacher I know. Yeah. But they have like those motivational posters and they have those things. I get that. Or you've you've gone overboard. I was young and foolish. <laughs> or we go overboard, like with you know, the teachers pay teachers, they have such cute things. You're like, I want it all, it's so cute. Like Look at the flamingo, like flamingos are in right now on Teachers Pay Teachers. And I'm like, I want a flamingo classroom now. Like, yeah. edit down. We have yeah. to edit down. Make it pretty. Still have your bulletin boards, but keep them empty so that they're ready for student work when they the students make it. Yeah. Okay. All right. All I'm, right. I'm done. I'm done ranting about the space and purging. Okay, go, Julia. I'm gonna let Wendy be the closer because she is always so eloquent. Um, I am not eloquent. I better work on something. So, really Go ahead. So I'm gonna jump in so I don't have any pressure there. Um, so I think to wrap up, the first thing I want to say is that um, being home with my daughter, helping her um, do school from home, I have been able to share an office and I listen. Um, I can't help it um, to her learning all day. Um, and so I'm always hearing the teacher's voice and then the, the comments and the things. And I don't think I would have truly, truly appreciated. Like, I know this would be hard and difficult. Like, I, I know that as a, as a teacher, but not necessarily being in the trench doing it um, because it's so new. If I had not been witness to it, I don't know that I would have truly understood just how challenging this is. Um, I, I can tell you that no teacher education, no teacher prep program prepared teachers for the classroom management they would have to do through a screen with their kids. Because the things that I hear for teacher having to kind of shut down or refocus or redo, I'm like, gosh, you never would have thought you'd have said that 10 years ago. All right. Um, so, so my first thing is that if you have kids in school right now and you haven't taken the opportunity to thank their teacher, or send them a nice, happy note, please do. This is hard. This has been hard. This will continue as we transition to be hard. Um, but remembering to thank people for the countless hours they're putting in to try and make this possible and good and doable for their kids um, is, is important. So, so that that's the first thing I think I want to leave you guys with. Um, the second piece of it is I really think it's time as we transition to focus on, as I brought up earlier, those things that we've gained. Yeah. Um, we've had, we, we, we've been able to really, I think, um, think a lot about the things that we've lost, the things that the students have lost. Um, we, we're there and because those are those raw emotions, those are those things that we felt. And now it's time because it's been it's been a long time. We're still going to mourn. We're still going to be sad for the things that we've lost. But now let's try and really figure out and look at the things that we've gained, the skills we have we've acquired, the ways that they have. We would never choose this again. It's been like a gauntlet of tech skills and PD and nonstop things. Um, we wouldn't wish for that ever again. No. But we've been through it, and that those survivors have learned a lot we have learned a lot. And so really sit down and try and find that list of things that, that you've learned that you do well now that you didn't do before and how you see that, oh my goodness, this is, this has made me a 
even better teacher than I was before. And I think if we try and focus on that and celebrate that, um, we will find that going back to face-to-face -to -face classroom, those of us that are doing that, or those of us in the global environment, that'll give us that nudge and push we need now um, to embrace this next layer of change. Because it's another, it's a layer of change. It's not normal. You're not going back to normal, um, but another layer of change, and we'll be able to, to fight that head on. Well, and I think, and I know this is not my turn, <laughs> but you're making me think of like the flipped classroom and the blended classroom model, which has been around for a while, but I don't think a lot of teachers have really used because they're like, I don't know how to film myself on screen teaching. They now do. Now. do. <laughs> you know, so you, might, you might have like a lot of your lectures or things that you um, normally would do PowerPoint-y, you know, slide decky in class. You might now have videos of all of those that you can use in a flipped classroom model and then assign them for homework. And then now in class, you could do more, more cooperative learning with it. So I think we've gained so much that I want it to, you know, like think about those models and teachers usually were like, what is a flipped classroom? Like, I don't understand. What does that mean? I don't want a video. I don't want, I don't want myself to see myself on screen. I don't want to hear myself, you know? Um, I think it's kind of funny because now we've had to, so you, you know how to do it and you have gotten better at it over time. And my, my second piece of advice, I guess, since I'm interrupting is just, um, record it like once or twice and be done. Like it's okay not to be perfect in your screencasts. It's okay not to be perfect, obviously in live streams where you have your dog and you have to take them out. And, um, I think that's okay. And I think kids like to see that vulnerability too. So, um, but yeah, you've learned, you've learned a lot, as Julia said, and I think you should all be proud of yourselves and we think the world of you. Okay. I'm done. Sorry, Wendy. All right. Well, um, I, I never know exactly how, what I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> but if you know me, you know, the relationships are my deal. And, uh, but I also want to talk about briefly uh, your relationship with yourself. I have very high standards for teachers, very high. Like if you don't want to do this job really, really, really well, out. Right now though, give yourself some grace. Um, I know people have been concerned about how they mesh all of this work and their family life. I don't have an answer for you other than um, make a concerted effort to be done when you need to be done with work. Um, nothing is more important than your family, uh, whether it's a spouse and kids or you live with your parents, that is most important. Then if you're taking care of there, then you can come in and do your very best work with kids and helping their parents and colleagues. But don't neglect yourself. And, and sometimes okay, just okay is okay. You won't hear me say that forever and ever, and you've never heard me say it before, but right now it might be okay. And then, especially as we transition, please love kids. We have no idea what is happening at, at home and how difficult this may have been for their families. Please just extend the grace and the kindness that you would want for yourself or your children, or in my case, my grandchildren. Um, we just don't know what's happening in, in people's worlds. In fact, two of my nephews just lost their mom. And I said to their dad, uh, they don't go to Gilbert. I said, are their teachers being good to them? And he said, oh, absolutely. And I said, but I would hate to have to inflict bodily harm on anybody. Um, we just don't know extend grace and kindness to yourself, extend grace and kindness to your students, and extend grace and kindness to your colleagues, and extend grace and kindness to parents. They pretty much that covers all, everybody. So, and hi, Sherry. I, I haven't seen you in a really people. long time. Blah, 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 blah. And she summed it up so well. It's created more opportunities for creative instruction, which I feel uh, like is like such a great way to wrap this up is this is a time where I think Julia and I and Wendy would be exhausted. Well, first of all, we are exhausted. <laughs> let's not let's put that to the side. But we we would. I think 
we like we all three of us like a challenge first of all and i think all three of us like to be creative and i think that's why we're in this job and i think we would look at this as a time to um, you know bring it on all right i mean you know it we've been, we've been through the gauntlet what else i mean i don't i don't want to push anything let me not no don't push it but i mean i feel like i love the idea of she said she's loving the challenge of this creative instruction like this is the time to put the put your that get that brain working and get that creativity flowing. Um, and how am I going to set up my room? Like instead of maybe making it, oh, I have to move stuff out of my room. Oh, I have to figure out how to incorporate technology. Try to do a mind shift where you can kind of light your own fire and be like, okay, I'm going to make this work. We can do this. Yeah, I can do this. Like I can, I can rearrange my room. I can rearrange this, my, the desk this way. I can, you know, I just need to just refocus and mind shift myself a little bit into a, into a more positive place. Um, because I feel like right now, a lot of us feel burnt out and tired. And I think we need that mind shift. Um, and I, the only way I think we're going to do that is if we either lift ourselves up or we find our cup fillers and have them lift us up. As we're, well. we're hoping to do more of these live uh, streams. And so I just want to invite all these people back if we get to do this again, which I think we will. It was fun. Yeah, I think. OK, so just to wrap up um, tech wise. Uh, so on YouTube, we have some tutorials. If you guys want to browse after this, there's some little tutorials that are on our YouTube page. Um, there's also some podcast episodes that are on. There's five podcast episodes on right now. And there is one about tech tools in fall. Um, and Sarah, it, Sarah's just came out on creating respect agreements in the classroom, which I think would be a great transitional time to, you know, as we're going in, Thanks, what are our yeah. new respect okay. agreements that we have? Because clearly one of them is going to be wear your mask all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like stay six feet apart from each other. Don't, you know, trade masks with your buddy. Okay. Um, it's not lunch. We're not trading sandwiches and, you know, snack packs. Um, so I think that'd be a great listen to. Um, but also if you click subscribe, which in a little bell that's underneath, um, it'll notify you in your email when we do post a new podcast, or we post a new live stream or a tutorial, and then you'll be able to kind of see what we're doing. Um, and that kind of helps the out of district folks too. I know we have some out of district folks that are listening. Um, that helps them kind of get some information as well from us. Again, you guys, if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, you know what, we're, we're available via email. Um, and then we're also available do, in our, um, social media platforms. Um, we've got Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. It's all at GPS growth. Uh, pro, sorry, prof growth. I don't even know. I should know this. Okay. You but should. This, I, I'm going to write it in the, on the chat just so that everybody is really, uh, GPS prof growth. Um, and we would love to see you guys there. Um, we do post research articles. We post silly, funny things. We post, um, you know, Julia has been posting. Julia has been posting. <laughs> Woo! Um, Julia is her, our social media newbie. So she's posting strategies every week that are just quick and easy. So like, you know, um, we're trying to support you, but we need, I'll also need to know how to support you right now. So if you guys could drop us d direct messages, private messages with your questions or with things that you want us to create classes on, that would be super helpful to us too, because we, we want to do and support you um, in any way that we can. Um, so of course we miss seeing all of you guys in person, um, but we are glad that we got to see some of you guys today live and we're, we're hoping that you guys are glad to see adult faces on screen maybe instead of little faces on screen um and we stayed in well i actually did run off but most of us the other two stayed in the, in the same spot and weren't jumping up and down so thank you guys so much for coming um we're, this is going to wrap us up um thanks to wendy and julia for coming on as well um and i think good luck teach on people i mean we're yeah. so proud of you and Together we can do it. We can do it. Okay. Just get in that different mindset. Bye guys. Have a Bye. good week. Bye.